If high-level design puts out sequence diagrams and detailed design involves state charts, how do you get from sequence diagrams to state charts? Closing that link is done the following way. Typically, there's a huge pile of sequence diagrams for a system. Figuratively speaking, spread them all out on the floor so you can see all of them. Then decide which object you're interested in. Pick an object, and for every sequence diagram in the system, first find the sequence diagrams that actually have that object. Remember, a sequence diagram omits an object if the object doesn't matter. So generally speaking, only some sequence diagrams will involve any particular object. On the sequence diagrams of the object, find the object and all the input and output arcs. In these diagrams, I've drawn red boundaries around to show you what they are. Look at the object from top to bottom every time an arrow originates or ends in the timeline, that arrow counts. There may still be quite a number of sequence diagrams and you've identified the object and all its arrows. Well, what does this really mean? What it means is you have a number of partial descriptions of object behavior and whatever state chart is there has to account for all those interactions. From that, synthesize a state chart that has the ability to do all the interactions. If you see two input arrows that are the same on different sequence diagrams, but produce different behaviors, that must mean they're accepted in different internal states and so on. There are tools that can help support the synthesis, but they can be very picky about requiring absolutely perfect sequence diagrams that think of every eventuality. In practice, people aren't too bad at this as long as you narrow it down to a state chart for a single object and you iteratively go back and forth between the state chart and the sequence diagrams to make sure all the behaviors are accounted for. When you're done, what needs to be true is that the state chart, when executed, will always accept the inputs in the sequence diagrams and send the correct outputs so that whichever sequence diagram is active will result in a system behaving the way it's supposed to.